Twelve years ago, China was rocked by a baby formula scandal that left as many as 3 lakh infants poisoned and 6 babies dead. They had consumed a milk formula that contained melamine, a chemical used in plastic. The crisis inadvertently led to the formation of a sophisticated global syndicate of professional shoppers that has transformed itself into a grey market over the years. Translated as, to buy on behalf, Daigu shoppers are predominantly Chinese nationals who live overseas and buy locally to smuggle goods back to China. After Chinese consumers stopped purchasing domestic milk formulas from the local suppliers, the demand for the Australian baby formula shot through the roof. It became a highly sought-after commodity in China and thus began the unquenchable thirst of the Chinese for the wondrous product in the rise of Daigu. Last month, a Daigu aeroplane, masquerading as a mercy flight, was sent to Sydney from Wuhan with 70 tons of personal protective equipment or PPEs. Interestingly, China had already ransacked Australia of its medical equipment much before the coronavirus threat grew to the level of a pandemic. So, when the authorities refused to buy the equipment at an inflated price set by the Chinese, the chartered plane had to turn back. However, or going back, the aircraft left with 11,298 tins of Ripless baby formula and 35,000 kilograms of the Tasmanian Atlantic salmon on board. It is being suspected that it was Daigu traders who had hoarded large consignments and sent them back to China. The Mercy Flight Rendezvous was orchestrated by one Yuan Richard Zuwen, who is the executive director of the Australia-China Daigu Association. It is believed that about 4 lakh Daigus are operating in Australia currently, sourcing and at times smuggling products for Chinese buyers and making hefty profits. The Chinese college students in Australia are turning towards this money-spinning opportunity of being a Daigu trader instead of going down the traditional avenue of looking for a steady job. The increasing menace of the Daigus has wreaked havoc on the local consumers, especially in times of a pandemic when commodities are scarce. The Daigu traders further aggravate the misery by emptying all the supermarket shelves the moment such items arrive at the stores. Australian parents have raised concerns about struggling to access the baby formula, whereas the retail workers say that they were being abused while monitoring limits on purchases. Australian chain supermarkets such as Coles and Woolworths now limit customers to buy two tins of baby formula per transaction. With increasing demand from mainland China, the Daigu industry has grown beyond the baby milk formula as its roster now includes a vast range of Australian products like cosmetics, clothes, food, wine, vitamins, toys and pretty much everything under the sun that a native Chinese sitting in Wuhan would want to be delivered at their doorstep. There is no explicit law regarding Daigus in Australia and consequently these traders have been given the leeway to be part of a grey market trade as the legalities of doing so are quite blurred. Daigu businesses are huge and accounted for one third of the total luxury goods bought by Chinese customers. However, these syndicates have been repeatedly involved in illegal hoarding and stockpiling of goods in large quantities. Last year, Eight persons were charged with theft of baby milk formulas in Sydney, amounting to over one million Australian dollars. A business park in Melbourne has emerged as the ground zero for the secretive baby formula export trade in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. At a time when a country's resources are running thin, courtesy the deadly virus, and the Home Affairs Minister has promised to punish those exploiting Australian supermarkets by stockpiling commodities, the Daigus have been quietly going about their work. Estimates suggest that the Daigu market is worth at least $2.5 billion in Australia and a significant portion of the Daigu trade takes place on Chinese social media platforms like WeChat and on websites like TMAII, a subsidiary of the Alibaba website. These transactions happening over the internet means that many operations are taking place off the Australian government's radar, making them hard to crack down on. 
A slew of publicly listed companies in Australia rely so heavily on Daigo sales that the Daigo have become known for their ability to sink the share price of a company overnight. The Daigo have transformed themselves into a major lobbying group and while some Australian companies reap benefits, the locals suffer significantly. The effect of lobbying power is such that the Australian government has not been able to come up with stringent measures to curtail the Daigo business. The Australian government does not even have the power over retail sales according to its consumer laws. But the disastrous impact of the Daigos has been quite evident in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. And therefore, the Australian government should impose restrictions on baby formula exports just as Hong Kong did in 2013 due to acute shortages. This industry worth billions of dollars is trying to legitimize their trading through the muscle power they have garnered over the last 10 years. If not stopped, Chinese nationals in the business will only continue to slip the medical equipment and milk formulas under the nose of the Australian government and cause shortages that will come back to bite Australian citizens.